You see that hole in the top? That's where a vent was. It was a pop-up vent um, for the roof there in the front of this trailer. I'm gonna be removing that. And what this is gonna do is I'm gonna put a, cut that out and I'm gonna actually put a fill plate in there. And this same type of deal can be used with any, uh, any body work on here as far as replacing any metal. So a similar technique can be used to replace any metal. So let's uh, get some measurements and see what we got. All right, this is up in the roof of this uh, trailer and this is a vent that goes right through. Uh, it was a pop-up vent. Um, I've kept this on previous trailers. There's no really reason to. There's gonna be a storage area up here. So I really don't wanna take any chance of uh, a bunch of water or rain or something getting in and ruining stuff. So I'm gonna actually fill in this. And this same technique can probably be used to uh, for really replacing metal and filling metal on the rest of the body. So let's just get some rough measurements here. We're gonna say uh, about a, a foot should get it. And then it's hard to do this with one hand, but we're gonna say nine inches ought to be enough. So I'm gonna go cut out some metal It'll be one foot by nine inches. And uh, then I'll, you know, cut this out to match and then I'll tack it in. Okay, so now I took those measurements from inside there and I put them on this. This is just a piece, actually a piece that I cut out um, of the skin that's on the inside, uh, access to that uh, tack room. So I've drawn it out. You wanna be sure if you're gonna get it square that actually your diagonals match up. If you can see my chicken scratches here, uh, the first rough end didn't go. So now if we look 15 and an eighth, by 15th and an eighth, so we're good to go. So all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cut this out and then we'll take it up top and I'll put it on there and I'll mark the area that I'm gonna cut on the roof. And what that'll do is then this plate will fit exactly in there. So really, as long as you've got an overlap of, of what you're gonna need, then you're fine. But the main thing is we're going to cut this out of this scrap, take it up top, and then we're going to mark what we're going to cut out of the top to uh, be sure this, feet, this piece fits exactly in there, and then we'll weld it in. clean up these edges a little bit and get it nice and ready to go up top. top and I'll use this as a template to mark out my hole so I'll also probably write bottom top that way in case this is not perfectly square or just a little bit off whenever I go now I'll clean this up take all the paint off of it and mark it again but that way I'll know 
what's the bottom and what's the top whenever I go to put it back in place when after I've done my hole. So let's go, uh, let's go mark this and cut a hole. All right, so now we're up top. This is that vent, that vent. And so this is our plate that we're gonna use to replace it. It's the same thickness. That's something good. You want it to be about the same thickness and also be weldable. You know, anything thicker than about 14 gauge should be good for a wire welder like I use. So you wanna be sure it's gonna cover up this whole space. That's what we measured earlier. So I'm gonna set it on there. Be sure that's covering everything that we want. And then top, and I'm gonna also mark this as forward. So now we just Exactly the area to cut out for this plate to fit exactly in there okay so I'll cut this out and then um, I've got some magnets that will hold this up from the bottom and hold it right in place and then I can tack it in and that's the way we'll that's the way we'll do that so I'll show you I'll show you how to do that here in just a minute all right so next I'm going to use my cutting blade and I'm going to cut out that square. Now we can tack this and it will fit just barely inside that. I'll get some magnets and we'll tack this to that. These magnets, cheap little magnets, they're to help you weld. All right, I got them just inside that lip. So we should be able to put this. Have it fit. All right, so I got that piece of plate laying in there. All right, I got it all cleaned up, got the paint off of it, and I'm gonna be tacking it in. So when I tack it in, I'm gonna be using, this is just a wire welder. It's a cheap one. It's, you don't have to get fancy because you're not a professional welder. It's just got, you know, I'll break that little piece off, but it's, got, it's a flux core wire welder. So what that means is it creates its own shielding gas when it burns. All right, you don't have to mess with gas bottles and all that stuff. And then it's good to get these welding gloves with the long cuffs on them because sparks tend to get down your sleeves, all right? Welding slag and everything tends to get down your sleeve. And then this is a auto darkening helmet. Auto darkening is the way to go. That way you don't gotta flip it up, flip it down to see what you're doing. It just automatically, it's battery powered. It's got a solar panel right there. And uh, what it'll do is as soon as you strike an arc, within a fraction of a second, it goes dark, okay? And, and protects your eyes. 
So that's what I like to use. So what we're going to do is we're going to tack this. I've got magnets underneath holding this up. We'll tack this in place and then we'll weld all the way around this so that this plate will be just like one solid piece of this roof. If you haven't learned how to weld, now's a great time to start. It's not hard and it's really fun actually and it's a great, great skill, great, great skill to have. Okay. Those are called tack welds. All I'm doing is tacking this into place. Now I can readjust my, uh, my magnets down here and get them over here and pop that up. So then I can put some more tacks in place and then I can run a bead all the way around. A bead is just a solid weld. So like I said, it's, it, you know, you can get a, a good welder and you know, good welder, you can get all the equipment, you know, for for just a few hundred dollars or maybe even less that'll let you be able to do this. You're not a professional welder, so what you don't got to worry about is running a bead and then never taking a grinder to it, right? The grinder is your friend when you're not a professional welder. You see that continuous bead? You just keep working that all the way around. All right, it's gonna be hard to fill this, but uh, I'll get it filled. It'll just, uh, it's just be a little bit more difficult to fill. It's no big deal. Um, you know, the less, the tighter your tolerance, the, the better as far as running a weld. And then you can come back and grind this off and grind it smooth on the bottom side. And then you've essentially got a new plate. I'll show you what it looks like when I'm done. All right, so now that I've got all welded all the way around, there's a bead all the way around. So now I'm gonna have to grind this down and clean it up. And I'll show you the finished product. All right, so it's kind of hard to tell in the video, but basically this is flush, this is flush, this is flush, this is all flush. All right, it's filled in flush. I'm gonna grind a little bit more on it and get it all cleaned up a little bit better, but everything is flush now. Now it's ugly because it's metal without primer and paint. So um, it will look a lot better once all that's done and all the prep work's done. But anyway, that's essentially a big patch. So you could also apply this method if you had a big spot of rust or a big dent or something like that that you just wanted to you just wanted to cut it out and then put a new piece in 
you can use this same method to that. So that's just, uh, I mean, that's how you do it. And like I said, you just work, work at it. And I got to clean this up a little bit better and I'll also clean it up on the inside. And it'll essentially, when it's done, you might be able to barely tell there was something done here, but uh, probably not. So anyway, that's how you do it. And uh, so uh, I hope this answers some of your questions about uh, patchwork and, and such and you know rust spots and all that. If it's so bad um, that it needs new metal, you can apply this same method uh, to replace a new metal basically anywhere on your trailer. So hopefully, uh, hopefully this helps some people and uh, good luck and happy welding.